Hi everyone, we're just going to wait about another moment or two just to let some people return from break. Great. Well, hello everyone and welcome to our HD Clinic panel discussion. I'm Sherry Mayhew. I'm the Resource Centre Director or RCD of Eastern Ontario, Kingston and Belleville with the Huntington Society of Canada. I'm pleased to introduce a roundtable discussion with a variety of HD clinicians, speaking about their roles in helping the HD community, followed by a question period. First, I'd like to welcome Dr. Sikorsky, who, who, is, a, who is currently a, a, prof, pardon me, a professor of medicine, specifically neurology, medical genetics, and pediatrics at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Alberta. Dr. Sikorsky received her MD from the University of Calgary. Following a residency in neurology and a fellowship in neurogenetics at UBC, Dr. Sikorsky has, uh, was recruited, pardon me, in the, um, to the University of Calgary Faculty of Medicine to develop the Movement Disorders Program in 1984. In 2010, she was recruited to the University of Alberta to expand the Movement Disorders and Neurogenetics programs. Her research interests include understanding genetic factors related to the development of neurodegenerative disorders, including Huntington disease, and developing new treatments for these disorders. Next, I'd like to introduce Jenny Ma, clinic nurse since 2015 at the K um, Edmonton Clinic at Alberta Health Services within the Parkinson's and Movement Disorders Program. Prior to that, Jenny also worked at the, at the Multiple Sclerosis Clinic at the University of Alberta and Adult Brain Injury Rehabilitation at the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital and within psychiatry at the Alberta Hospital in Edmonton. Next, I'd like to welcome Dr. Vern Bennett. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. Bennett is an Associate Professor, Education Director, and previous Saskatoon Area De Departmental Lead Psychiatrist at the University of Saskatoon. These three panelists are also joined by two of my colleagues at the Family Services Centre at HSC, Sarah Lachance and Aaron Stephen. Combined, they have over 16 years experience supporting our HSC Family Services team. Sarah Lachance is the RCD for Northern Ontario, is a registered psycho psychotherapist in Ontario who provides support to patients and families attending the North York General Hospital HD Clinic and helps to coordinate biannual clinics in Northern Ontario providing support to rural communities. Erin, the RCD for, Sask for Saskatchewan, is a registered social worker who participates in HD clinics in, in Saskatchewan, providing supports to, to those undergoing genetic testing. Erin is also our coordinator for the Youth Mentorship Program at HSC. These are our wonderful HD clinicians making up your HD clinic panel today. Now it's time for us to kind of to present um, and I would like to hand it over to my colleagues, Aaron and Sarah, for their introductions. Thanks. Hi, everyone. So there are 16 clinics across Canada that cover every province, as well as provide support to the three territories. Each clinic operates a little differently depending on what clinic you attend. You may see a variety of different specialists. An HD clinic may include a neurologist, a psychiatrist, a nurse, and an HSC resource center director. If there's research or clinical trials at your clinic, you may also interact with research staff. The neurologist on the team is trained to assess and treat individuals who are at risk or diagnosed with HD. They can provide treatments for neurological symptoms and educate patients on various aspects of the disease. The psychiatrist working on the team has a specialized knowledge of the psychological impact of the disease. They can provide treatments and support to affected individuals, their caregivers, and those at risk for developing HD. 
The nurse provides clinical support. They may facilitate communication within the clinic and troubleshoot with the clients. Caregivers are encouraged to reach out to the nurse when concerns develop. The resource center director from the hunting for individuals and families who are affected by HD. They provide counseling, education, and advocacy support. They also serve as a link between the HD clinic and community services. HD clinics can also include a number of professionals such as physical and occupational therapists, speech therapists, psychologists, social workers, dietitians, geneticists, and research teams. I'll now pass it off to Sarah, who will sh share more about attending clinic appointments. Karen, so the clinic, who can attend clinic? The clinic is open to individuals with Huntington's disease, as well as individuals who are at risk of developing Huntington's disease. So this includes individuals with a confirmed diagnosis, as well as individuals who may not have gone through the predicting tested process, um, but are suspecting symptoms of HD. We also strongly encourage uh, family members and caregivers of individuals to also attend the appointments as they can provide important and helpful information to the clinic team about the day-to-day -day, uh, lives of the individual with HD and their care needs. Another important note about clinics is that many clinics across Canada have been offering both in-person and virtual appointments to help provide support to individuals and patients in uh, living in rural and remote communities. And since the start of the pandemic, uh, we have more clinics have incorporated the use of technology to see patients. So depending on the clinic uh, that you attend, appointments can be held either in person or virtually using video conferencing technology or telephone. And some patients may choose to use uh, attended person and for one appointment, for example, and then the next appointment do virtually. Typically, though, initial consultations and examinations are done in person whenever possible. Also, when we talk about clinics, so some clinic sites across Canada are maybe participating in studies such as Enroll HD, which is an observational study, or clinical trials. And the clinics themselves may choose to coordinate the patient's clinical appointment with their appointment for the studies or trials. And although the appointments may be occurring at the same time, it's really important to note that to distinguish that a research visit versus a care visit. And the goal of this is simply to try and reduce barriers for individuals to be able to participate in these uh, studies by not by reducing the amount of times they have to come into the office. Um, also, when, when an individual goes to clinics or during clinic, referrals to other services and supports are made based on the individual need and in consultation with the team. And these can include referrals to physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, dietitians, to name a few. It's really important that all professionals work together to help manage the most effective treatment for the individual, since the disease often develops so differently in different people. So now that's a kind of we've given a brief overview of what clinics. Can look like. I'm going to pass it over to Jenny and she can talk a little bit about her role within the clinic she works with. Hi, sorry, I think I had a bit of technical difficulty there. It just froze. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jenny. I'm one of the clinic nurses in the Parkinson's and Movement Disorders Program at the University of Alberta, where I work closely with Dr. Sikorsky and Bernie from the Huntington Society. I am lucky enough to work in a team with multiple neurologists, a geriatrician, psychiatrist, physiotherapist, occupational therapist and a dietitian, along with other clinic nurses and research coordinators. I have been asked to explain my role as a clinic nurse in the Huntington's clinic. I thought the best approach would be to explain this as though you were coming into clinic or calling me with a concern. Now, as mentioned, clinic visits have looked a little different since the pandemic, but typically when you first come into clinic, I would be seeing you first. Um, I would begin by checking your weight, vital signs, and reviewing your medications. I may ask whether you've found the medications effective or had any side effects. Next, I would ask how you're managing at, at home and at work. 
who your supports are. Um, that includes informal supports like friends or family or formal supports such as home care or the Huntington Society. I will also ask about documents such as your personal directive, goals of care, or an enduring power of attorney. I will ask about the status of those documents, whether they're in place, being worked on, or if they've been enacted. We will discuss <clears throat> whether you've had any changes in motor function, falls or near falls, changes in your balance or walking, and whether you're having any extra movements. Then I would move on to non-motor functions. How are you sleeping? Are you having any difficulty staying or falling asleep? Have there been changes to your mood or behavior? This can include feeling withdrawn or getting upset more easily. Have you been seeing or hearing things that aren't really there? Or do you believe things that people tell you aren't true? Have there been any changes to your speech or swallowing? This can be as simple as coughing while you're eating or drinking, or even feeling like things are getting stuck in your throat. I'll ask if you've noticed any changes to your memory. Uh, this can include word finding difficulty or difficulty concentrating. Typically, I do complete a cognitive assessment once a year. Often, a family member will accompany you to your visit, and we think that's a really good thing. If someone has come with you, I will ask them whether they've noticed any changes that we should be aware of. And this is because sometimes we don't notice the changes ourselves. If there are any concerns for my assessment, I may ask for your consent to make a referral or provide you with some information on how we can manage that. If you're already connected with a resource that can help, I may reach out to them. Between visits, I often get phone calls. Uh, when I get a phone call, I need to determine what that concern is. And so I will be asking a lot of questions um, so I can obtain the information I need. I may make recommendations or referrals on your behalf, but it is not within my scope of practice to adjust or prescribe medications. So for that, I do consult with the physician. Sometimes when I get a phone call, my clinic is not the appropriate resource to address the concern. In that case, I would direct you to a more appropriate resource, such as a general practitioner or the social worker from the Huntington Society. Whether I see you in person or receive a call from you, my job is to assess, provide education, liaise with other members of your healthcare team, and connect you with resources. I do communicate with other members of your healthcare team, and if they have additional recommendations, I will reach out to you. We do work closely with the research coordinators to try and integrate both the clinic and research visit um, so that we can maximize your time. Overall, uh, we work as a team to provide the best coordinated care that we can um, to both the patient and the family. Thank you. Great, I now invite uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Sierkorski to be able to explain a little bit about her clinic. Um, sorry, I uh, the enable button to see me doesn't seem to be working. I don't know if tech can uh, I can start talking, but if somebody could call tech to um, enable it, please. Um, I'm clicking on it. It doesn't work. It's not coming on. My, my picture isn't coming Dr. on. Dr. Sikorsky, I had to refresh to make it work. And where? Um, At the top where? Um, Just in the top tech. left hand corner of your, of your uh, browser, you're going to have to hit the circle to the refresh seems like um, your camera has been turned. I'm showing your camera is turned on. Oh, now it's off again. Okay. I, um, yeah, sorry. It's, um, doesn't seem to come on. 
No, what we need you to do is in the in the top left hand corner of your browser mm -hmm. where you see the little house and the two arrows and then you've got a circle. Yes. Oh, OK. Re yeah. Okay. Reload the page, please. OK. OK, is that working now? Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Thank we you. Sure Perfect. can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think um, Jenny and Sarah have a, a great job at explaining overall um, what we do in clinic. So I'd just like to uh, just briefly summarize that at the University of Alberta, uh, we serve uh, the population of the northern half of the province and Nunavut and Northwest Territory. So we have a large catchment area. And we're fortunate to have a well-resourced multidisciplinary clinic. Um, besides nursing staff, we have occupational therapy, physiotherapy, dietitian, access to speech-language pathology, and a variety of rehab programs, um, as well as, of course, a psychiatrist, Dr. Jorge Press Prado, who's uh, very much part of the clinic. Um, and uh, the clinic is a also has very close uh, liaison with genetics as I actually run the predictive testing program uh, for Huntington's disease and the research program. So it's a very uh, fluid situations where people may come into the neurogenetics clinic or the Huntington's genetic clinic if they have symptoms, then get transferred to the movement disorders clinic. Um, they're asked if they want to participate in research. And so patients do sort of move back and forth um, uh, in the three areas. Um, in Alberta, as in many other places, you do need a referral to access the clinic. So you can't just phone up and, and uh, be uh, get an appointment. Um, although in genetics, we are much more uh, uh, easy going about that. So certainly if I have a family where I already know an individual with HD, their family members can just call up and come in for counseling or come in to be seen. So so as I, you are all aware, we're really dealing not with an individual with HD, we're dealing with a family. And so we try to support the whole family. Um, very important part of our team is uh, the social worker. And I really would like to commend the Huntington Society Canada for uh, supporting the social work program because that's a very important uh, link between us and the individuals and families and we would not be able to provide that type of close support with um, with the funding that we have from the hospitals. Um, we are using uh, telehealth and Zoom quite a bit and as uh, Sarah mentioned uh, used to, we try what we try to do is see the person once a year in person uh, and usually that's combined with an enroll visit. And then six months later, we'll see them by Zoom or telehealth. So the visits are once a year in person, once a year by, um, uh, by telehealth or Zoom. And that seems to be working very well. Um, I think the problems that we're uh, looking at, which are pretty consistent across the country, is uh, wait lists to get in to see a neurologist, particularly a neurologist that specializes in Huntington's disease there's still not many people that are specifically trained in um, Huntington's disease care. And um, it, a number of us are, are retiring uh, soon. So we need to really look at that. Um, rural populations, uh, particularly if you live in the far northern part of Alberta, won't have the same access to resources to try. And, so there is an equality of care that we're trying to deal with. And finally, I think uh, us as well as um, number of places are looking at budget cuts so we just are stressing the importance of maintaining uh, a multidisciplinary environment for patient care thank you thank you very much dr sikorsky for that overview i'm much appreciated i now invite dr bennett to be able to explain a little bit about his experience in the hd clinic um, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for the uh, HD Society to invite me to participate in this clinic, at, uh, this conference. It's very much an honor, and to meet all of you on the panel uh, today. Hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll all be able to kind of gather together in place at a conference. So that would be that would be wonderful for sure. 
So my name is Vern Bennett and I am in Saskatoon. I have an appointment to the College of Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan as well as to the Saskatchewan Health Authority. And my clinical, primary clinical work is in psychiatry and I work both in education and uh, do clinical work. I started my practice in about 1991 and had an interest from the outset in individuals with basically neuropsychiatric conditions, overlaps between neurology and, and mental health sort of needs, and began to see people with Huntington's disease very early in my career. And at that time, the ability to see individuals was sort of a bit disconnected from other specialties that would be seeing them. And then with the launch of the Huntington's clinics, of, gee, it's got to be 13, 14 years ago, and uh, maybe even longer, the clinics became quite a bit more coordinated. So in Saskatoon, I work uh, along with Erin Stevens, who's on this panel. She is the clinic coordinator and family and client liaison with the patients we have all across the province. And with Dr. Andrew Kirk, he's a neurologist. And uh, we've worked in this clinic together now for uh, over 10 years. How our clinic normally worked pre-COVID and we hope to move back into, we had a coordinated, we have a coordinated clinic model where we see individuals together about once a month. And how that works is the family and or patient and clients come together and see the neurologist. They see me in psychiatry. They'll see Aaron. And then at the end of the con end of the clinic, we meet and case conference around everyone. We're our clinic in terms of some of the larger uh, multidisciplinary clinics uh, do not have built into our clinic like psychologists and occupational therapists and physiotherapists. What we do is we make those referrals, for example, for someone who needs speech and language, if it's in the Saskatoon area, we do that ourselves uh, locally. But if the individual is from another center in the province, then we'll coordinate those referrals to their primary care provider or whoever made the referral to us. It may have been a neurologist out of Regina, for example, and we'll try to help facilitate that most often through the local nurse practitioner or family doctor to ensure they get the assessment they need from physio or occupational therapy. And Erin in, in our clinic does a lot of that sort of coordinating to ensure that those things happen. In addition to seeing individuals within the clinic, both the neurologist and myself and Erin also, we will also uh, engage families and patients separately. If the neurologist doesn't need to see the individual quite as soon as perhaps I do, then I may, may arrange to see them individually in my office uh, or via telehealth as does uh, Dr. Kirk. And then again, Aaron will liaise with uh, patients and their families on a, on a much more frequent basis as needed, depending on the stage of illness and what the family's needs are. So that in a nutshell is how our clinic operates uh, right now. The or how it had been operating. Right now, we've been doing mostly virtual care, of course. Uh, we see individuals uh, through a virtual platform and the whole team comes together and sees and sees the patients. And then uh, we discuss sort of follow up from, from then. And we're hoping in the next uh, two to three months to begin to doing more in-person care again. But even, even then, before, Huntington, before COVID was even a thing, we still did telehealth clinics because a number of our patients reside in very remote regions of the province and it, wasn't, it was neither, neither convenient for them uh, or practical, it was really cold in the middle of the winter. So we would organize telehealth clinics in addition to our in-person clinics. So that basically demonstrates we, we try to be very flexible to meet the patient and family's needs where they are at. I think that's all I need to say for now in, in terms of summary, and then can take questions later on, of course, Sherry. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much to all of our HD uh, clinician panelists uh, that are joining us today. I invite those to start um, imploding our questions tab as the questions are, are coming, which is great. You will find the questions tab on the right-hand side of your screen uh, and kindly write those out. We do have a few uh, questions just to get the ball rolling, um, and it comes from one of our viewers. Um, this question is to any of the panel members. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the referral process and estimated time to be seen um, and, and uh, what families can do while we wait for that initial um, HD clinic appointment? 
Um, so maybe I can I can start. Um, so the referral to the movement disorder clinic needs to come from your family physician or another physician. Some people see a internist, for example, or a community neurologist. So we do require a referral letter from whichever physician is looking after you now. Um, the wait lists are um, a little too long and it does depend on the urgency. So if I get a referral letter that says that um, uh, this person is having problems, that they're at risk for losing their job, uh, that they're having um, uh, problems with memory or with behavior, then I will fit them in sooner uh, within a month or two. But if, if they appear to be cared for, for example, by a neurologist in the community, then the wait list may be longer, up to a year. And this is just due to the time availability of clinic time we have. Um, in our clinic, the our psychiatrist will not see the patient directly. The referral has to come from Jenny and myself if once the patient is seen, and then if there's issues that we would like Dr. Presprada to deal with, then we would refer to the psychiatrist. Um, like I mentioned in the genetics clinics, we are a little bit more flexible if we, particularly if we know the family that you can, you don't have to have a referral to genetics. Great, thank you so much. Is there anything that the panelists would like to add to that for their experiences? If not, I do have more questions. The uh, question tabs is blowing up. Um, the other question that I have here is for any of the any of the panelists. Could you speak to what your virtual clinic or what a virtual clinic appointment is like? I can speak a little bit to that uh, from how we run our virtual clinics. So typically our clinics will have the neurologist that the individual is seeing as well as the HSC um, social worker or uh, resource center director also attending. So for some individuals, it all depends on where they are in the province, um, what their um, Wi-Fi technology are, what those types of things. So for some individuals, we can do video conferencing right from their home where we can do, they can be sent a link and to join from their living rooms. For others, we would send them to a telehealth site and they would attend at a different site. So, because not everybody has the capability in their own homes, so we can have them go to a site and then they would be seen by both the neurologist uh, and myself, for example, at the same time. I don't know if that's different in other areas. It's uh, Vern Bennett here. We, we, it's very similar to how we do it. We have the whole clinic team together for our virtual platforms. Sometimes the virtual video platform is not working so well, so some individuals just will connect with them over the phone, but it's always preferred if we can to have a video platform. But the whole team is on those calls. The neurologist, myself and Aaron, are all on uh, those virtual clinic, uh, clinic calls. We have a question in our question tab about how many HD clinics are there in Canada? I can take this one. Um, preparing for this, Sarah and I went through and counted. We have 16 HD clinics that cover um, across the country. So like in the Maritimes, for example, not every province has one, but one will cover, um, take care of the other provinces. That's a great segue, Erin, because we had a question about what if I move from province to province? How can I get a referral to that HD clinic in my new province? That that happens. People move. And well, we absolutely um, just let us know. We put all the information together and, and send it off to, to the new doctor wherever you are located. Great. Thank you. Another question that was posed was, what are some of the, ch uh, the changes that you've seen working within the HD clinic since the pandemic? Um, well, I, I think maybe Jenny and I can take that one. Uh, first of all, uh, we see, we were not allowed to see patients in person for a while last year. So 
pretty much everybody was seeing either by Zoom uh, and they couldn't, we couldn't even use telehealth because they couldn't go to another hospital to the telehealth facility. So it had to be either by Zoom and or phone. And as Dr. Bennett already mentioned, phone is not um, nearly as uh, easy to, to, to get a good idea of the patient problems. Um, if you're not, you really do need to see the patient by Zoom. Um, we do, we can do an exam. We can do the rating scale that we do, the United Huntington's Disease Rating Scale, the UHDRS, by Zoom quite well. Uh, certainly by telehealth, we can do it. We've been doing the cognitive assessment, MOCA or SLUMS, by Zoom. Uh, so we figured out ways to do that. So the relation, it, it's still not as satisfying, I don't think, either for the patient and family or for us not to see the person in person, but at the same time, we can get a lot of information. Unfortunately, in Edmonton, because our nurses were redeployed to the COVID wards, uh, typically we did not have a nurse with us on the call, which obviously would be ideal. So I would have to uh, get Jenny or talk to Jenny separately if there was a, a nursing issue that she she needed to deal with. Jenny, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I think to echo what you said, just um, most of my work has been by phone. Um, I have not been able to see patients in person very often during the pandemic, uh, both due to us not being able to have as many people come in, um, and also just uh, just due to the staffing issues with so much redeployment. Well, one other thing maybe I forgot to mention is that Bernadette, our social worker, used to come into clinic with us. So in the olden days, pre-COVID, uh, Jenny, Bernie, and I would all be in clinic together. Uh, but now the hospital won't allow uh, her to come into clinic. So we hope that that will change as um, the restrictions get lifted. Great things to look forward to once the pandemic moves forward. We have another question in our in our uh, question box, and it's to uh, any one of our panelists. What happens if there is no psychiatrist at the HD clinic that's nearest to me? How would I get access to a psychiatrist? Who would like to take that question? Well, 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 I can I, take a kick at that, I suppose. So go, go ahead, Dr. Sikorsky. No, no, you go ahead, please. Um, I'm, I'm going to maybe put on my previous uh, area department head hat, which you know, I was wearing for about 20 months of the COVID sort of situation. And, and a lot of that has to do, a lot of the work involved, you know, human resource needs, psychiatry resource needs. So if you don't have a psychiatrist in your clinic per se, then much like access to psychiatry in various parts of the country, there's a bit better access and then not so good access in lots of places. Uh, one would, in most instances, seek a referral from their primary care practitioner uh, or from the neurologist that's working in the clinic that they may be connected to in that, uh, that HD clinic specifically. Uh, because because then they could perhaps, uh, they might know of or have connections with a particular psychiatrist that has some interest in uh, neurocognitive disorders and and expertise in, in, the, in that domain. For example, in Saskatchewan, other than myself, there are two other psychiatrists that I know of that have quite a bit of expertise in that area and, and have seen patients and, and family members uh, that struggle with uh, Huntington. So, so we've had referrals uh, via another family doctor or a neurologist to get access to them, which is, a, you know, a rather sufficiently vague answer for you, unfortunately. But um, that's the you know usual route to get a referral to a psychiatrist would be through your primary care provider, or if you're connected with a neurologist in your clinic, uh, the neurologist perhaps could make a referral to a psychiatrist if they don't have one specifically assigned to their clinic. Thank you so much, Dr. Bennett. Um, another question, what can we do if we have a HD related question or concern between our HD clinic appointments? I can take that one. Um, that's when you would give the clinic nurse or clinic coordinator a phone call um, to discuss what the issue is and we can go from there, whether 
we ha can manage it by phone or if we need to bring you in earlier. We have, in Saskatchewan, we have uh, recognized, recognized the clinics in across the country are organized similarly in some respects and then differentially in others. So in Saskatchewan, how we've, how we've established that follow-up model is that we would agree within that clinic setting to say, okay, we'll see you and review in three months or six months. But depending on the need we indicate, but certainly call us in between if you need to. So sometimes that need may be psychiatric in nature and so they'll contact my office and I try to make myself readily available and then arrange coverage when I'm away to take take calls from patients or families if there's concerns related to the kind of psychiatry symptoms. And Aaron, I don't want to speak for you, but in, in my experience working with you, you're very also readily available. And Dr. Kirk, our neurologist as well. So we just tend to make ourselves available to, to individuals if they need to be seen or talked to sooner than the actual scheduled clinic uh, follow-up. And if I was looking for a list of uh, cities or towns, et cetera, that have a HD clinic, where would I look? You could go right onto the Huntington Society website. We have it all listed on our website where our clinics are and who to get in contact with. And if you're unsure, you could also reach out to your resource center director and find out um, what there is. Is there a clinic in my area? If not, is there a clinic that would cover off and, and help me out that way? Great, thanks. There's one other for all, for each uh, of our panelists, uh, another question, and I would, we would love to really hear this piece. Um, what do you like most about working within the HD clinic? You can start with Sarah. Sure, um, I think one of the benefits of the multidisciplinary team approach is that it's very much a collaborative um, approach to care and I think that's very much the patients themselves really appreciate that the family members as well because we're not just treating the individual with HD we know that the family uh, this is a journey that they've been on they may have been on it with other family members as well so I think you you learn to you get to know the individual but you get to know the families and they build that trust with all the different levels and so it really feels like a team approach um, to the care. I have to agree with you, Sarah. HD is a complex disease and there's no there's no easy answer. So the more you know members you can bring to the team, the more support that that we can you know build for that person. Uh, it's I think it's just being a part of the team is is really great and making sure that we can get the best support and services to that individual and to their family. Um. Well, I've been looking after Huntington's families and individuals for 35 years. And I'm now looking after, in some cases, a third generation of the patients that I started with. And that's very satisfying, I think, as mentioned, to know the family, to take them through um, sort of what we know about HD, what how we can help. Um, the I think the most exciting thing that I'm part uh, that I'm part of now is the research is uh, the formation of the Huntington Study Group, which is an international large collaboration. Uh, being able to have patients enrolled in research, uh, the sort of the excitement about uh, the current genetic studies that are going on. Um, the interest in finding uh, better treatments for Huntington's disease. Great, Jenny, would you like to contribute and tell us about what is great about working at the HD clinic from your perspective? I just find it to be an honor to be um, included in the healthcare team or just, you know, as part of the team for the patients and family and um, to be able to help coordinate with the other members of our interdisciplinary team, just for those small wins and the big ones too. Great, Dr. Bennett. Yeah, thank you. I, I for, for for me certainly the uh, team dynamic and trust we've built over the years that has been I think reflected in uh, trust from the families and the 
you know, the client suffering from uh, struggling with, with HD, it's really provides really deeply meaningful experience in terms of meaningful relationships and a real sense of defined purpose that what we're doing matters and uh, everybody really cares about one another, uh, which is really, really rewarding when you're working with a team. We, we all get along really well and uh, I think that the families and the patients uh, recognize that. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been a great, it's been a really great journey for sure. Thank you. I think we might have uh, time for one more question. And the question is, how are the HD clinics, uh, clinics pardon me, addressing the needs of rural and remote communities? Um, well, that is, um, I think, an issue that we aren't addressing them as, um, a, as well as could be, but it's not, not that we don't want to, it's that the resources and the facilities for, uh, for OT, for speech, for rehab programs is in the major cities across Canada. So that is a, a a large philosophical question, which is not only appropriate for Huntington's disease, but for Parkinson's disease, for Alzheimer's disease, for any neurodegenerative disorder, uh, that there is not sort of the understanding sometimes and the support that uh, we have in the larger centers. Um, I think we, we're doing what we can by offering, for example, Zoom and telehealth and uh, providing education and having uh, social work help. I think that is that is a big component of uh, providing more information to the rural communities. But that is that's a major problem across Canada, I think, in all all disorders. Great. Did, did we want to address uh, the the HD uh, clinic in Ontario? Uh, sure, uh, Sherry, I can speak to that a little bit. So um, previously with Dr. Gutman's Center for Movement Disorders Clinic, we were, I worked closely with their clinic and one of the ways that he had been working to try to help uh, service those communities was he would do what we call, I called a little bit of a traveling road show. So we would bring the clinic to the north uh, twice a year and he would bring some of his research uh, team as well so that people in northern communities could participate in studies such as Enroll HD. And so that was one way that we were able to do that um, by partnering with different facilities to use their space, their clinic space, and we would go from one community to another over a three-day period. Um, to have individuals that wouldn't otherwise be able to attend clinic physically. Um, and it's not the same as we mentioned virtually, but it is one way that we were filling the gaps in between appointments was virtually. Uh, but uh, certainly that type of thing that we're hoping to continue with uh, North York is to be able to go to the North and bring the neurology team to the North uh, and research to be able to have individuals um, be seen in person there. Yeah. If I could just mention, when I was in Calgary, we actually did do that. We went to Lethbridge and to Medicine Hat every six months. And unfortunately, in Alberta right now, the um, we've lost our support for that. We've lost our funding and support to do that. Uh, I think that's not, like I said, not our decision at all, because that was actually very rewarding to go into the community and see the patients there. Um, but I think that that maybe should be advocacy from Huntington Society Canada um, to the healthcare systems in the different provinces. Because I, I, I agree with you, Sarah, that was a very rewarding clinic, you know, both for us and for the patients to do that. Well, I, I just wanted to, I'm just cognizant of the time. We're about to wrap up. Um, I wanted to say, to say thank you to all of our panelists for your your expertise and your experiences with the HD community are, are, are welcomed and we thank you. There's a sentiment in the in their question tab that says uh, that to, as a thank you for offering the HD clinics, they're widely appreciated by patients and families. So that's a great note to end on for this session.
Thank you so much again for attending. It was truly engaging and very useful for all of our viewers. Just cognizant of the time that we do have a closing session that's now uh, about to go live. Uh, you can see that in the left-hand side of your screen. Um, and we'll hope to see you there very shortly. Thank you again for everyone for attending and have a great day.